getting the new tribes on side was more than a challenge. Part-time musician Greg McCainch decided to make a student film about the toughest crowd of all, Melbourne's Sharpies. He seemed to learn nothing from the exercise and took his new glam band right into the lion's den. Yeah. Everyone's wearing makeup and I was wearing some hideous lurex sort of jumpsuit and we thought we were definitely going to get uh, not get out of there alive, surrounded by Sharpies, but you know, we sort of won them over. This was a weird new Australia. Plenty of glitter, an ex-surfy singer named Shirley, a cross-dressing, cranky guitarist, and a weird name, Skyhooks. They either liked them, hated them, wanted to beat them up, called them poofters, whatever it was, everyone reacted to that band. But it was their attitude that had the biggest impact. They took nothing seriously, including themselves. Skyhooks in some ways was a reaction to the blues boogie bands, not just in the music, but in the, in the look of the group too. It was the end of the Vietnam era. There was a mood in the country that we were looking, people were looking for the new. And I think somehow we kind of delivered that. Like I said, don't experiment too much. You, you, you should have your parts set by now. Just stick to them and, and uh, try to keep it like your very first started off. Nice and enthusiastic. Greg yeah. McCainter's lyrics were unashamedly about local life. They pulled it off, like, magnificently. All that stuff, you know, bought his first dope at the South Yarra Arms. Uh, Carlton, do the Ligon Street limbo, you know, and all these stories attached to each area. I was very impressed by people like Chuck Berry, who could say, you know, Memphis, Tennessee, and would conjure up such powerful sort of images. So I tried to see if there were any places, in my experience, you know, where I lived, that kind of had that, that kind of charisma or ring to them, and... Uh, you know, Wagga really didn't do it for me, with all due regard to Wagga. <laughs> they made Australians feel, you know, positive about writing about our country, what's going on here, the frustrations, and uh, really, whatever happened to the revolution, we all got stoned and it drifted away. They soon became theme songs for an entire generation. Rock may have made a raid on the pub rock circuit, but it couldn't seize the ground from the hard rock army. Luckily, another front was opening. A new television show that completely changed the way Australians thought about music was recruiting talent. None of us have ever played with colour before, and it is a game now. There are no ground rules for this show. We're breaking them all, every one of them, in every show. An artist will now have to seriously consider and plan as part of his stage wardrobe and his television wardrobe because it's amazing how much difference it is going to make to the performance. We do a little white Made by a group of ABC producers with theatrical leanings, its public face was a former music journalist, record producer and eternal party animal, Ian Molly Meldrum, Countdown's number one spruker. What is Countdown? Well, Countdown is the most exciting visual presentation of the top 40 hits you'll ever see on colour television. From Alice Cooper, to Sherbet, we've got them, and you'll see them on Countdown. To have then people all ready to go, like Skyhooks, uh, John Paul Young, um, Sherbet, uh, ACDC, um, was just so exciting. Oh, we're on the first show, aren't we? Mm. Well, the first show will be a killer dilly, you know, like, we'll either make it or break it for you. <laughs> <laughs> John, can I just have one comment, please,
Skyhooks was the first band to take full advantage of what colour TV was all about. Commercial radio took offence to the lyrics of their debut album, Living in the 70s, and banned six tracks from Airplay. Half the people in my office were like, oh, we're sunk, we're finished, this is the end, what are we going to do? And I was laughing and they said, what are you laughing about? I said, you've got to be kidding, this is a bonus. They can't go and listen to our songs for free on the radio, they're going to have to buy them. If anything, was a picture of how things all melded together, it was in fact Skyhooks, because there it was, I mean, this is all changing, you know what I mean, makeup, I mean, the makeup on a, a man was almost a flora. As they said, everybody was wearing blue jeans except them, so you put them in front of a colour television with the makeup and the bizarre looks and the theatrics and the outfits, and it was just absolutely mind-blowing. Skyhooks went on to sell nearly a quarter of a million copies of Living in the 70s. Countdown could claim a lot of the credit. You didn't have to rely on radio solely. You could do a countdown show and next week if your song was good you'd see the sales and the people, whether they lived in Gove or Catherine or Broome, you could get into everybody's lounge room and it was really part of life, sitting down on a Sunday night and whether you liked the bands or you didn't, your big sister would like one and your other brother would hate this one and it was just a talking point of the week. Countdown's growing stable of acts and a healthy live circuit had re-energised the local music scene. The two musical factions, hard pub rock and TV glam, were both thirsty for tunes and lyrics. Australia's most successful songwriting duo were ready to provide. When former Easy Beats, Harry Vander and George Young, came back from Britain in the early 70s, packed in their suitcases was a huge stash of unreleased songs. We were in the wilderness, just writing songs, writing songs. Uh, we never forgot them, you see, we put them down. So we had a bank. Uh, we had a lot of songs in the bank. <laughs> uh, hundreds. When you see so many people around, good songwriters, groups, singers that have a lot of talent but never get the chance to get somewhere we just we just like to give them this chance i got talent yeah no can you sign me up <laughs> we sang. under the wing of their former publisher ted albert vander and young reinvented themselves as producers for bands and singers who could carry their tunes to begin with they took their old singer stevie wright to the top of the charts with a 14-minute epic called evie <laughs> Then they really hit the target with a song for Scottish-born John Paul Young. I was one of the first names they, they called in, and Yesterday's Hero was one of the first tracks I put down. Here is the news. Police spokesman said today that the management of Robert Page tonight during his concert. The spokesman for the said he had suffered a nervous collapse and sent him to the hospital and was seized by hundreds of times. Raiders just here he is with us with paper. Take a look at me and yesterday's evil. Yesterday's evil. That's all I It was ironic. Yesterday's Hero, a song about the Easy Beat's own struggle with fame, had created a new star. I'd basically walk in and, and they'd sort of look at me and, 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 and write a song in front of me. 
and then give it to me and I'll go and see it. We were very zoomed into anything that, you know, like that's radio friendly, obviously, because that was our that's our training, you know. I was witnessing the tail end of probably six or eight months of uh, you know, agonising over bits of songs or whatever, and I, I wasn't I wasn't seeing that, I was just seeing the the final flourish, you know. And it looked so easy to me. <laughs>